as we're working with series, the big question we're really interested in is does the series go to infinity or does the series add up to a finite number? So that's going to be our question that drives us today. How do we know if a series converges, meaning goes to a specific number, or diverges, meaning goes to infinity. And actually, this is the question that's going to keep with us throughout this entire unit. Does the series converge, or does the series diverge? We're actually more interested in whether or not it converges or diverges than what it actually adds up to. So the first way we can do this, and this is really the first test we should always do when trying to decide if a series converges or diverge, it's called the divergence test. It's a quick test that will tell us if a series diverges or if we're not sure. What we do is we consider the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of a sub n. We're looking at some series, some sum. If the limit as n goes to infinity of those individual terms is not equal to 0, Basically, what that means is as we get up to infinity, are we adding numbers or are we adding 0? If we're adding 0, it may or may not converge. But if we're adding anything else but 0, it's definitely not going to converge because it's always going to be getting bigger and bigger. In fact, that also works um, if the limit does not exist or if the limit is infinity. Then. The sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of a sub n diverges. So if the terms aren't ultimately going to 0, then the series is not going to converge. Let's take a look at some examples. Let's first try the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n over 3n minus 1. Well, to use the divergence test to see what's happening, we can take the limit as n goes to infinity of n over 3n minus 1. And we know that the higher powers, the n over 3n, are going to take over. And that's going to ultimately equal 1 third, which is definitely not equal to 0. In other words, once we get out to enough terms, we're basically doing plus 1 third, plus 1 third, plus 1 third, plus 1 third. And that's going to keep getting bigger and bigger. So because that does not equal 0, therefore, we will say this series will diverge. Any time the limit as n goes to infinity of the individual terms is not 0, it will diverge. So if we tried to find the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of the cosine of 1 over n squared, we can do the same thing. We'll take the limit as n goes to infinity of the individual terms, cosine of 1 over n squared. Well, if n gets huge, this becomes 1 over a huge number which basically means we're taking the cosine of 0. And we know the cosine of 0 is equal to 1, which again is not equal to 0. So eventually, we're just doing plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. That's never going to settle out at a number. Therefore, this series diverges as well. Let's try one more example. Let's take the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n plus 1 over n squared minus 3n plus 1. Well, again, our strategy for the divergence test is we're going to see what happens if the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over n squared minus 3n plus 1. 
Here you'll notice the n squared has the highest exponent, so it's going to take over, which means the denominator is going to become huge. And we'll have a small number divided by a huge number, which is 0. So now in the end, this one is eventually doing plus 0, plus 0, plus 0. But here's the catch about the divergence test. If the limit equals 0, that does not mean it converges. Because sometimes it will converge, and sometimes it will diverge. So when the limit equals 0, we say the test is inconclusive. When we're inconclusive, we're going to have to do some other testing. And that's really what the rest of this chapter is going to be about. But for now, we're just going to say inconclusive. So that's the divergence test. If it, the limit as n goes to infinity of the individual terms goes to anything but 0, we know it diverges. If it equals 0, we don't really know anything. So we have another option to test. And this is what is called the integral test. By the way, the integral test only works if all the terms are positive. If we have negative terms, the integral test will not work. So alternating series don't work. Even if there's one term that's negative, the integral test won't work. But if all the terms are positive, and we're looking at the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of some series, what we'll do is we will let the function f of n be equal to the individual terms. And we will take the integral from some number, any number we want, up to infinity of f of n dn. This integral and the original sum will either both converge or both diverge. So if we can take the integral, they will both do the same thing. So if the integral equals infinity, the sum equals infinity. If the integral equals a number, the sum also equals a number, but they are not necessarily the same number. It just means that they both converge to a number. So let's take a look at some examples. Let's take a look at the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the fourth. If we use the divergence test on this, the limit as n goes to infinity we see is 0. So that's inconclusive. So what we'll do instead is we will use the integral test to see if it tells us something. We'll take the integral from, let's go from the first term 1 to infinity. And we don't like to integrate fractions, so I'm going to write this as n to the negative 4 dn, which we know is equal to n to the negative 3 divided by negative 3, which we know, let's simplify that a little bit further. We'll bring the n to the bottom. So we've got negative 3 n to the third, and we're integrating from 1 to infinity. Well, if we plug infinity in, we get 1 divided by a huge number, which is 0, minus, if we plug 1 in, we get a negative 1 third. And minus a negative 1 third is positive 1 third, and it equals 1 third. The number doesn't matter so much as the fact that it equals a, po a number. It doesn't equal infinity. Because the integral converges, the sum also converges, because both the integral and the sum are going to do the same thing. Let's take a look at one more of these examples. Let's take the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n over 3n squared plus 1. Again, the divergence test says that this is going to 0, so it's inconclusive. So let's try the integral test. Let's take the integral from 1, because that's the lower limit, to infinity 
of n over 3n squared plus 1. Well, we're kind of set up for a u substitution, where u is 3n squared plus 1, du is 6n. So, oops, I forgot the dn. So we'll multiply by 6, and we will multiply by 1 sixth. And so that's going to give us 1 sixth times the integral. And let's go ahead and plug the limits in. 3 times 1 squared plus 1 is 4 to infinity of 1 over u du, which is equal to 1 sixth natural log of u integrated from 4 to infinity. But when we plug the infinity into the natural log, the natural log always gets bigger and bigger. We end up with infinity. So the integral diverges to infinity. And because both the integral and the series do the same thing, if the integral diverges, then the sum will also diverge. And so what we see here is a great example of the, how the divergence test is inconclusive. Because both of these, the limit was 0. So we had to use a different test to decide one converged and the other diverged. Before we wrap up here, though, I want to talk about one special series. And this is a series, when we see it, we're going to just recognize whether or not it converges or diverges. It is called the p-series. A p-series is a series of the form as the sum going from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the p power. If we were to do the integral test on this, we would take the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the p dn, or the integral from 1 to infinity of n to the negative p dn. And the exponent property says we increase that exponent by 1, and we divide by the new exponent, negative p plus 1. And if that's the case, we are integrating from 1 to infinity. When we plug that in, what we really end up with is, and this is going to be kind of loose notation here, not quite correct. We should be doing the limit as n goes to infinity, but I'm just going to write infinity in for the n. We get infinity raised to the negative p plus 1 over negative p plus 1 minus, then when you plug 1 in, 1 to any power is 1 over uh, negative p plus 1. But the important thing to note here is infinity has an exponent of negative p plus 1. If this is in the numerator, then the whole thing goes off to infinity. But if that infinity ends up in the denominator, the whole thing goes to 0 and it converges. So this means it will diverge. if the exponent, negative p plus 1, is greater than 0. Because if we have a positive exponent, then it will diverge. And if we solve this uh, by subtracting 1 and dividing by negative 1, if p is less than 1, or really, or equal to 1, because it is the harmonic series if it's equal to 1. We already know the harmonic series. 1 over n diverges very slowly, but it diverges. And then the opposite is true, that it converges if the exponent, negative p plus 1, is negative, which moves the infinity to the denominator. Or if we add 1 and divide by negative 1, if p is greater than 1. So this is kind of the important idea that the p series will diverge if p is less than 1 or equal to 1. Let's go ahead and write the or equal to in there. 
And it will converge if the exponent is greater than 1. And that can save us doing all the tests. We just have to look at the exponent if we're actually working with a p-series. Let's try some examples really quick to wrap up this video. First, let's consider the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 5 thirds. Well, this is a p-series because it's 1 over n to some exponent. And that 5 thirds is greater than 1. Because it's greater than 1, we know it converges. Similarly, we can look at the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 2 fifths power. Well, looking at that exponent, 2 fifths is less than 1. Because it's less than 1, this p-series diverges. So this will be an important series to add to our other series that we're familiar with, the harmonic series, the geometric series, the p-series. These are ones we should recognize really quickly when they converge and when they diverge. So we're going to wrap up here, give you a chance to practice some of these, trying to, to decide using the divergence test and the integral test or recognizing a p-series, does this series converge to a number? We don't really care what number. Or does it diverge to infinity? Take a look at the practice, and we will see you in class to discuss it further.